I love the fall, I love the colours and uh, this is a chestnut tree, it's lost all its leaves and the willow is following suit quite quickly then you've got the silver birch that is bright yellow now and um, I don't know, how do you explain it, it's just so beautiful here is a quick fix that I use. Sometimes you get these little feather edged flakes that come on the corner or the edge of a piece of wood, especially on oak does this happen and you want to keep that wood intact. Take a piece of, of um, masking tape, cut through it like this and get these ready and what you do is you take one, put it right in the middle here like this, pull it round so it's nice and tight so it's tightened up on that corner and then take some super glue on here like this, just follow the fissure that, that's on the surface and it'll wick through to this edge here. Once you've done that I'm going to put one little tab right on this end here just to make sure it's tight down and then just squirt it with the accelerator like that. That will set immediately and then you can take off your tabs. Watch your fingers with this stuff. So there you take your tabs off and you can go in and you can plane it, you can file it or you can use a rasp on it and it will be absolutely invisible by the time you've done. It's an ideal way to spend a lazy afternoon, isn't it? Flying over the English Oxfordshire countryside in a hot air balloon. Sometimes I've seen as many as eight or nine in one area and that's always fascinating. I wonder what it's like up there. I've never been up, but I imagine it's noisy because of the breeze. But there is a sense, I wonder if there are times when you don't have the hot air going. And uh, there's just a quietness about it, I'm sure. I don't really know. Here's something I want to show you. I've got two plastic cups to mix in. I've got a glass of a bottle of plain uh, cold water. I've got the sanding dust from a belt sander. I've got some uh, PVA glue or whatever, resin bonded glue, whatever they call it, and PVA. And I've got a kettle with boiling water in. And I need the boiling water because, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm taking some of this dust here. This is oak dust, so I'm putting a few scoops into here. Three scoops. And then I'm going to take three scoops into this one. And then I'm going to throw the rest of the dust away, because what I'm making is a filler. A I know a lot of you talk to me about, you know, using glue and sawdust for filler. I don't really like that because I know why you're saying it. But here we're going to put some glue into here and glue into here. Okay, and we're going to mix that. It's not very scientific, but it, it will have a scientific air. Uh, phenomenon going on in here so there it's starting to get like this a lot more dust than glue so I'm going to add some water here like this just to thin it down a little bit now this would be ready to fill say knot holes uh, and uh, fissures and things like that and you could use this just as it is as a wood filler because now it looks like the kind of wood filler you get in a can and it does work it works great a little bit more 
But the problem is this on my left, the one with the cold water, will set up overnight. So if you're going to mix it, you can mix it straight away and it's a perfectly good filler because the glue will go off and harden. So there is, that's your glue ready to go. Now my other one here is the one that I have used for the other method, should I say, is one I have used on and off because you do have to use filler from time to time for different reasons. My plastic is collapsing here. So I've got that one mixed. Okay, scrape this off. But now what we're going to do is we are going to add some boiling water to this glue. And this makes a huge difference to the glue because now it mixes much easier for one thing but also it stops the glue from hardening in the can so if you took a rubber glove now and stretched this over the top of this cup this plastic cup just to seal it it'll stay uh, flexible for a few weeks usually and uh, so I've got the same product but I just added the boiling water and that makes a big difference so there we are I've got my medium oak filler and uh, if you want it lighter you can add another wood you could add some pine if you wanted a light oak and if you wanted a dark oak you could add some walnut um, sanding dust you want it very fine that's what maybe coming off your belt sander at 180 grit something like that and there it is my filler is ready to go so i just pop that back in the bottom there put a plastic gl uh, rubber glove over the top of it and i'll do the same on this one we'll see what happens over a, a short period to see which one actually hardens up there is something i want you to see i just turned round because something you may or may never have seen before and I want you to see it just in case you never did see it ever in your life you should hear it by now These, this is a turkey farm and they're raising turkeys not for Thanksgiving because we don't have Thanksgiving uh, the same type of Thanksgiving that Americans would have um, and uh, these are turkeys that are being raised for Christmas. Don't they look wonderfully healthy? A couple of guys having a little fisty cuffs over there. Nothing serious. My Thanksgiving will be with my family because my children are American born and we have friends coming from uh, who are Americans too so they're going to join us to celebrate Thanksgiving in the American traditional way. See you later, guys. So I'm here at the um, panel, sheet panel, sheet materials uh, place. Powell's where I get my sheet goods from. And he's about to extract a couple of sheets of quarter inch plywood because they don't have any half inch that double sided. So I'm probably going to just buy the panels and uh, laminate the two together so so he'll cut them into smaller panels because I came in my car and uh, as you can see it's not a massive car uh, but if I cut them into the panels it'll work Surprising what you can get in one of these little cars, I'll tell you. Faust. I was just, um, this week has been a really hard week probably one of the hardest we've ever had in so many ways but um, 
Life is made up of hard things, and uh, I um, was looking at some of these um, different things that I've enjoyed in my life, making things, and I looked at this little box that I made back in 1988, and um, inside I've got these little numbers, and uh, I've got the number one, I've got the number zero and the number zero I've got two sets of these and these were my collar numbers some of you won't realize this I spent nine years as a police officer in Greater Manchester and um, in Moss Side, Long Side, places like that I was there during the riots in the late 1980s and um, and that was when I decided it was time to go back to woodworking. And I was so glad that I did that because it preempted my move to going to the U.S. to becoming an, emig a, a, an immigrant. I emigrated to the U.S. and um, it took me a long time to get the visa, set up in Texas, start a new life over. <clears throat> and I remember cutting down this piece of juniper, this is ash juniper actually, uh, Some in Texas they would just call it cedar, but it's ash juniper, it's a very dense grained hard wood and um, it, um, it's got this incredible colour which I just love, but I remember cutting this stump from, it was already dried, it was what they call st uh, standing dead, cutting it into pieces and making what they called a bandsaw box from it. Uh, in the shape of a fish and giving it to my parents as a gift. It was the first piece I ever did. It was the first bandsaw box I ever made. And uh, then it came back to me when they passed a few years ago and um, I put my collar numbers in it uh, from my police days and that's where they'll stay until I pass it on to somebody else, one of my children or my grandchildren. But I, it just made me reflect on this week because every Every time you make something like this, you can remember a hard time. I remember this coming back to me because my parents died. And we all have to pass through these hard times. And, uh, but one of the things I'm loving the most about my work is that uh, my work enables me to go through hard times, go through difficult passages. And that somehow work brings sanity. And if you are having to work, or even if you're not, your work should be so important to you that you have picked it, chosen it, and you're working at it, whether you get paid or not. That's what makes the difference between an amateur and a professional. An amateur does it because they love it, and a professional only does it if they get paid. Now I know there are many professional woodworkers who are at heart amateurs, so I include those in this, uh, this special sphere of people, these amateur woodworkers, because there are lots of professional woodworkers who are indeed amateurs. So we do it because we love it, and, and the thing is, once you've uh, found yourself to be following um, a path of vocational calling like that, you will end up... Um, embracing uh, the problems knowing that you're going to come through it as I have and every time a problem comes up in your life go make something and I think you'll find therapy in that there's a kind of a silence amidst the noise of, of hammering and chopping and, and uh, planing and sawing every time your stroke is switched to a back position so you push the saw forward pull it back it seems negative then you move a direct forward and it's in the direct thrust and in the withdrawal that you find peace and harmony and, and that's what I want you to feel when you go into your workshop because we all have problems to face, we've all got struggles but we have to climb over it and move forward, constantly moving forward and I, I'm very thankful that I've got my friends and my colleagues that I work with and, uh, and we've all been able to support one another through the years. And um, this has been a tough week, I have to say, but we've achieved so much. I've got this cot well underway. This is the oak one. It's not the prototype. It's the real McCoy. I've got this beautiful 
figured grain that every time I look at it, I think to myself, this is the most amazing wood. And I look at the beauty in it and I think, ah, this is very, very therapeutic, just to the shaping of it. You know, taking something that was a lump and making and shaping it into the character of a top rail, making the joint with the character of a, a tenon, making the other part, the, um, the mortise, making all of those things, cleaning it up, shaping it, smoothing it, making it beautiful, um, are all part of the therapy. Uh, you know, this is what makes us tick, this is what revives us, it restores us. Silence and peace come from working with your hands. I don't care who you are. That's my view. This grain, this chatoyancy is just beautiful. This is the top rail of the baby cot that I'm making. And this one, look at this here. Ooh, it looks like a fiddle on a fiddle back and a fiddle neck. I thought this was just so stunning. So I've got the joinery done on this, on both of them. So I've got the headboard and the footboard, if that's what we call them, on a cot. But um, now I've got the long frames to do with the uh, slats in. I'm looking forward to that.